Hey, what's up guys? We're going to look at electromagnetic photons. So you're all aware of the EM spectrum, which is the spectrum of electromagnetic waves. So we've got radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, UV, X-ray and gamma rays. And we've got a range of wavelengths there. Scientists have known about electromagnetic waves for a long time, but there's been a big debate about the nature of electromagnetic radiation. Is it a wave or are they particles? Isaac Newton believed that the electromagnetic radiation was in, would traveled in the form of waves, whereas Huygens believed in corpuscles or particles of electromagnetic radiation. And actually, we now use both of these models. But let's have a look at some of the properties of electromagnetic radiation and see which model explains them. So reflection can be explained by both the wave model and the particle model. So can refraction. But if we look at diffraction, which is where waves spread out beyond a gap, that can only be explained by the wave model. It can't be explained by the particle model. So there's our first difference, and it sort of le it shows that scientists maybe sort of lean towards the wave model of electromagnetic radiation. Polarization, which is where you restrict the oscillations to one plane of transverse waves, and we can do this for electromagnetic radiation. So we can explain that using the wave model. Polarization cannot be explained using the particle model of EM radiation. Interference, once again, is only explained by the wave model, but not by the particle model. So you can see for a very long time, actually the wave model was the model of electromagnetic radiation that was winning for a very long time. But then at the turn of the 20th century, the photoelectric effect was understood, and this could not be explained by the wave model. And it could only be explained by treating electromagnetic radiation as particles, or what are known as photons of EM radiation. So this is actually evidence for the particle model. And this creates a bit of a dilemma in science because we've got electromagnetic radiation, which has been understood for a very long time. We've known about it, but we've got two different models. We've got a wave model and we've got a particle model. Sometimes they both work. Sometimes only one model works, for example, for, for polarization and interference and diffraction, the wave model explains, but then the photoelectric effect can only be explained by the particle model. So we have a dilemma and we call this dilemma wave particle duality. And this is actually our solution to it. And we say that sometimes dependent upon our measurements, sometimes electromagnetic radiation behaves like a wave and sometimes it behaves like a photon. And it's really important that we're not saying that electromagnetic radiation is both at the same time. It's just dependent upon what we are doing, the measurement and the experiment we are doing. Sometimes it behaves like a wave and sometimes as photons. And that's the concept of wave particle duality. Just taking a slight step back now, we're just gonna look at the EM spectrum a little bit more. And there is a huge range in wavelengths from radio waves at 10 to the two meters to gamma rays down at a tiny 10 to the minus 12 of a meter. So radio waves are very long wavelength and gamma rays are very small wavelength. And I'm, I'm using the wave model here to describe them. We can discuss them in terms of frequency, and we know that the wave equation, so the speed of electromagnetic waves is given by the C, the speed of light, is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. So we can say that the frequency is inversely proportional to wavelength. So gamma rays have a very high frequency, and radio waves have a very low frequency. And you should all remember from GCSE that gamma rays have high energy, and radio waves have a low energy. So we can see here that there's a proportionality between the energy and the frequency, and it's actually a direct proportionality, that the energy of electromagnetic radiation is proportional to the frequency, and it's inversely proportional to the wavelength. And we're gonna look at the equation for how we can determine the energy of electromagnetic radiation. So we're gonna now introduce this idea of a photon. So a photon is just a particle. So we're gonna now assume rather than waves that sometimes EM radiation can act as a photon. And a photon is defined as a quantum of EM radiation. And what do I mean by a quantum? It just means a packet. It means a little packet of energy. We don't really know what these particles look like, but we can describe photons as quantums of electromagnetic radiation. It's got a fixed amount of energy. And the energy of that quantum of EM radiation is given by this really important equation. 
We've seen the proportionality, that energy is proportional to frequency. And we've got a constant in here, which is called Planck's constant. And this is a fundamental constant in the universe. Wherever you go, it's a constant value and it enables you to convert between energy and frequency. So the energy of a photon is given by Planck's constant multiplied by frequency. Planck's constant has a value of 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. Frequency we always know is measured in Hertz and energy is always measured in joules. But we also know from the wave equation that the speed of light is equal to F, the frequency multiplied by wavelength. So we can rearrange that equation to get F. So F is equal to C over lambda. So we can now substitute that into this equation e equals HF, which gives us E equals HC over lambda. All I've done there is replace F with C over lambda. So we have two equations, E equals HF, and E is equal to HC over lambda. And though from there, you should be able to see the proportionalities come out that the energy is proportional to the frequency. So if you double the frequency of EM radiation, you double the photon energy, and it's inversely proportional to the wavelength. And that's why gamma rays, high energy, high frequency, very small wavelength, and radio waves have low energy, low frequency and a long wavelength. So now let's use these equations. So let's go for some worked examples. A photon has a frequency of 300 gigahertz. What is its energy in joules and in EV? So now we just go to our equation. So E is equal to HF. So it's 6.63, that's Planck constant times 10 to the minus 34, times by 300 and it's giga. So that's times 10 to the 9. And that gives a value of 1.99 times 10 to the minus 22 joules. It's that easy. You just simply use the formula and substitute in. Quite often, though, photon energy is very small. So we use electron volts. And to convert from joules to electron volts, what you have to do is divide by the elementary charge. So you divide by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. So when we do that, we do 1.99 times 10 to the minus 22, divided by 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19, and we get 1.24 times 10 to the minus 3 EV, electron volts. So we now have our photon energy in joules and EV. Right, our second question. A photon has a wavelength of 0.2 nanometers. Calculate the energy of the photon in joules and in EV. So in this time, because we've got the wavelength, we're going to use our equation E is equal to HC over lambda. So that gives us 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34, multiplied by the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8. And we divide by the wavelength, 0.2 times 10 to the power of minus 9, because it's nanometers. And when we do that, we get 9.95 times 10 to the minus 16 joules. But now we want it in EV. So we need to divide by 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19. And that gives us 6,220 EV, if I round that to three significant figures. Very simple. In this case, I use HC over lambda because the question gave me the photon's wavelength rather than the frequency. Next one. A photon has an energy of 250 keV, kilo electron volts. Calculate the frequency and the wavelength of this photon. The thing to remember here is that we never use electron volts in calculations. We always use joules because that's our SI units. So let's convert that energy first. So energy is equal to 250 keV. So we need to convert that. We're going from EV to joules. So we have to multiply by 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19. So it's 250 kV, so that's 250 times 10 to the 3, multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19. And that gives me a photon energy in joules of 4 times 10 to the power of minus 14 joules. It's a very small packet quantum of energy. So now we want to work out the frequency. So I'm going to use E is equal to HF. Rearranging this, very easy equation, frequency 
is the energy in joules divided by Planck's constant. So I do four times 10 to the power of minus 14 divided by that fundamental constant, Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34. And that gives me a frequency of 6.03 times 10 to the 19 hertz. Now I could use E equals HC over lambda to work out the wavelength. But I'm going to use the wave equation. C is equal to F lambda. So lambda, because I also want the wavelength, is the speed of light divided by the frequency. So that's 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by the frequency, which I've already got, which is 6.03 times 10 to the 19. And when I calculate that, I get a value of 4.98 times 10 to the power of minus 12 meters. So it's probably a gamma ray photon or an X-ray photon. So really important to remember here that we had to convert the kilo electron volts to joules before we used our very simple equations. The last one is the trickiest type of question that you're going to get in the exam. So let's have a look at this one and really focus very carefully on this. A laser has a power of 60 milliwatts and emits photons with a wavelength of 630 nanometers. Calculate the number of photons emitted per second. This really hinges on the fact of the definition of power. Power is the rate at which energy is transferred. So it's power is energy over time. So 60 milliwatts actually means 60 millijoules per second. And if I want to calculate the number of photons per second, I'm going to have to use a very simple bit of maths. I'm just going to say that it's going to be the power or the energy per second divided by the energy of one photon. So our power is 60 times 10 to the power of minus three watts because it's milli and the prefix is times 10 to the minus three. Now we need the energy of one photon. So E, we've got it in terms of wavelength. So we're gonna use energy is HC over lambda which gives 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34 times the speed of light, which is three times 10 to the eight, divided by the wavelength, which is 630 times 10 to the power of minus nine, because it's nanometers. And that gives an energy of one photon of 3.16 times 10 to the power of minus 19. So now if I want the number of photons, it's the power divided by the energy of one photon. So I'm going to use the power, which is here, 60 times 10 to the power of minus three, divided by the energy of one photon, which is 3.16 times 10 to the power of minus 19. And that gives me a really big number, 1.90 times 10 to the 17 photons per second. And there we have it. Really important to remember that the number of photons is your power of your laser divided by the energy of one photon. So in summary, wave particle duality, what do we mean by that concept? It's just that we have models in science and electromagnetic radiation sometimes behaves as a wave and it sometimes behaves as a particle. The photoelectric effect is the singular piece of evidence in which EM radiation only acts as photons. So what do we mean by a photon, this particle of light? The definition, a photon is a quantum of EM radiation. And the equation for the energy of this quantum of EM radiation, these photons, these particles, is the energy is HF or HC over lambda. It's really important to remember the wave speed equation, C is equal to F lambda. And you need to remember what the values of the constants are. So C is the speed of light, which is three times 10 to the eight. And this H, Planck's constant, is 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34. That constant will be given to you in exams, and it's what enables you to convert between frequency, wavelength, and energy. A couple of things to remember. If you've got to convert from EV to joules, you need to multiply by 1.6 times 10 to minus 19, and to go from joules to EV, divide by 1.6 times 10 to minus 19. And you've got to do that before you use these equations, if you're given the energy in EV. And if you've got to calculate the number of photons per second, you do the power of the light source divided by the energy of one photon. 
So it's a really important topic and it's the foundations of quantum mechanics. So really take time to get your head around it and just really get to grips with the formulas and the definitions and how to do the calculations. That's it. Thanks for listening. See you all soon.